So what is up guys, Suda the Savage back and I am here with my Chargers and Saints recap. My god, this was a stressful game, but the Saints prevail as we win 30-27 to in overtime in Week 5 to advance to a 3-2 start. Not exactly the start I wanted. It was honestly kind of the start I was expecting knowing a Saints general season, which is usually a slow start, a, rep, a long, long win streak, a loss or two down the road, finish strong, blow it in the playoffs. That's the same season in a nutshell. But anyways, there was a lot to get to this game. This was long. And basically, I'm going to be, as always, getting into the summary of the game, or uh, summary of the players, and of course the outro. So without further ado, let's get this video started. All right, so I know there's a bit of a change for the filming of this part of the video, but what ended up happening was I filmed it last night. I went to bed. I uh, was just going to edit it and upload it. But then I realized while I was doing the recap, my mic just cut out. So we are going to do the recap again. So starting off, Chargers get the first ball and immediately Saints force a three and out. I'm thinking, all right, our defense came to play. Let's hope our offense did. They did not because um, immediately we don't do a three and out, but just a very short drive. And then on the very next drive, the Chargers get the ball and they cap it off with a 17-yard touchdown to Keenan Allen. However, they did miss the, Michael Bagley, the Chargers kicker, did miss the extra point. More on him later, but then of course we punt the ball again. Oh, they get the ball, and they go three and out. Oh, we get the ball in their territory, like on their 49. Once again, we do absolutely nothing. I mean, we do just enough to get into field goal range, and Will Lutz does the rest as he kicks a 50, a 48-yard field goal so that we're down 6-3. to three. And then the very next drive, oh, we force another three and out, and they punt, but of course, Dwayne Washington gets flagged for roughing the kicker, which it, it was an obvious penalty. Like, he was not going to avoid it, so... You know, they get the ball, and of course, on that drive, Justin Herbert skies went out to Jay Gutton, and, uh, well, he burned Lattimore and nearly got the touchdown, but they do cap it off with a two-yard touchdown to um, Mike Williams. So, and then Bagley kicks the extra point, and they go up 13-3. to uh, Then, of course, we punt again after a three and out. Uh, they go three and out, and then we almost go three and out, but Drew Brees throws a pass that gets intercepted, and uh, they almost take it to the house, so... Just at that point, I was just starting to lose hope. Uh, then the Chargers, they're on the they are on the one-yard line. We sack them, so they're on the eight. Uh, then they do a run, they're on the four, and then they cap it off with a touchdown pass to um, Hunter Henry. So then we get the ball, we punt again, and then they for and we force a three and out. And on that last drive, it was just like another one of those short drives and just ended in a punt. So then the Saints, I'm thinking, we need to score. So we start driving down the field. And uh, Drew Brees throws a six-yard touchdown to Emmanuel Sanders. Psych, it was only a five-yard pass because they called him one yard short. So we tried like a pass to Taysom Hill on the next one. Didn't work. So Drew Brees does his classic fleur de leap when he's on the one. Just takes the ball, immediately becomes a runner, and just jumps over just so he can break the plane. Gets the touchdown. We're down 20 to 10. On to, the, on to halftime. So then we get the next ball. Immediately we punt again after another short drive. But of course, we make them go on a short drive and they punt the ball. And uh, once again, we don't do much on the next drive, but we do just enough for Will Lutz to get into field goal range. Kicks a 53-yard field goal. Uh, Chargers on their very next drive, uh, they made a little bit of progress, but not much as ultimately they ended up punting. And then the Saints on their next drive, uh, it was a pretty long drive, but it was capped off with a 41-yard touchdown pass to Jared Cook. And it wasn't like a quick like five-yard pass and Jared Cook did the rest. No, this was a long pass by Drew Brees. And it was a good moment because everyone says he's got no arm strength. He does, but he just he just doesn't utilize it as much. And honestly, if he just doesn't, if it's like the short passes and screens that leads to victory, if that's what's going to lead us to victory, then I'm fine with it. But it's always nice to see Drew Brees skied out like he used to. Then we force a Chargers punt, and then we go three and out. And, um, we almost make the Chargers go three and out again, but on a third and ten, um, Justin Herbert finds Mike Williams for a 64-yard touchdown. Uh, Patrick Robinson was on him, and he just got absolutely fried. And then the Saints, I'm thinking, okay, like, we need to get a touchdown, but we need to kill off enough clock. Because, like, if we kill off enough clock and get a touchdown, you know, they're not going to have a good chance, and we can just go to overtime. We do get the touchdown, because eventually we get onto the nine, and then it's like a third and four. We call in Taysom Hill, um, and he takes the ball and runs it in for the nine-yard touchdown. See, Taysom Hill is useful. Might kill Drew Brees and everyone else's fantasy values but who cares it's Taysom Hill and then on the Chargers drive they have a chance to get in and originally they were just doing it off short passes just looking to get into field goal range 
you know, just a lot of short passes, but then eventually Justin Herbert skies it out, a 29-yard pass to Mike Williams, and he just makes a miraculous catch. Now, a lot of things I did, now, something I did see a lot in 2018, kind of 2019, is that whenever Phillip Rivers needed, like, a DP, you know, just, like, a last-second ditch effort to, you know, just get enough yardage on a play, he would throw to Mike Williams, and he would always make the most miraculous of catches. So I wasn't shocked that he did it this time. So then Michael Bagley comes on for the 50-yard field goal. He kicks it, and he doinks it. Hits it off the right upright. It's no good. We go into overtime. Saints, we win the coin toss. Of course, we elect to receive, because in overtime, uh, both teams receive the ball unless there's a touchdown. So I'm thinking, of course, let's just get a touchdown, and we can win the game. Didn't quite get a touchdown. Killed off a lot of clock. Made a lot of progress, but Will Lutz just came in to kick a 38-yard field goal. So you know what? Up 30 to 27. Good enough. Let's just... and. Just hope the defense can make a stop. So Herbert throws and gets a first down. And I'm thinking, oh, God damn it. It's it's happening again. But then, you know, they do a rush and it's second and six. Two straight incomplete passes and it's fourth and six. And I'm thinking, this defense, I am just asking for you to get one more stop. He uh, Herbert throws it. It's a short pass to Mike Williams. But Marshawn Lattimore was getting fried the whole game. Tackles him. And Demario Davis comes in for the assist, and he's about a few, and he's a few inches short of the first down. Saints win. I was hyped. I was just yelling, "He's short! He's short!" Let's go, Saints victory! Thank God we win it, 30 to 27. The main theme was in the first half, uh, just lots of short drives and uh, just minimal work done. And the second half, you know, just not much. And basically, the theme of the game was just like Saints capital I just did nothing in the first half, a lot in the second half. Did enough in overtime and then finally got the defensive stop. And in terms of defense, it was either we were causing three and outs or we were getting scorched. On to individual player stats. Alright, so now we're moving on to individual player stats. Starting off with my man himself, Drew Brees. So, what to think about his game? So, he definitely mixed in elements like how he played against the Packers and played against Lions. You know, a little bit more, like, kind of dropped down. You know, he was a lot more, a little bit more reliant on checkdowns this game, like, pair of lines like he played a little bit like the how he did against the Packers and the Raiders where he was more on the short game but he also threw in a little bit more from Lions game the Lions game as he was throwing a lot more deep passes than usual he threw for 325 yards a touchdown and a pick overall I'm happy with his performance actually no I'm kind of I'm okay with it because you know the pick really hurts it and I just want him to you know trust himself more to throw deep like I know this is not the same Drew Brees as we were accustomed to a few years ago. I, I think he's starting to reach that Peyton Manning swan song season effect where, you know, you're getting old, your arm's starting to decline, it's not what it used to be, you're throwing more turnovers, you know, you're relying more on short passes, but you're able to throw in like a deep one every once in a while. Like, that's the thing, Drew Brees is starting to experience that. And that's getting me a little bit scared, but hopefully, just like the Peyton Manning swan song, it ends with a Super Bowl victory as he rides off into the sun. So Drew Brees is definitely on his last legs, but he still can sling it out there. So he's all right for now. Did all right. Give him a solid 7 out of 10. Uh, then in terms of rushing, we definitely did not rush this that much this game. Only 25 team rushing. Only 25 carries in total. Alvin Kamara had 11 carries for 45 yards. Uh, Latavius Murray had 8 carries for 34 yards. Taysom Hill had 13 rushing yards, but he did have a touchdown. Uh, Mark Burton, the fullback, had two rushing yards, and of course Drew Brees had the one touchdown where he leaped over the defense. It was just one yard. But anyways, in terms of receiving, Emmanuel Sanders. Now I'm starting. Now I'm more satisfied with what we're getting out of him, proving he's a decent number one receiver. Definitely could be a lot better as a number two when Michael Thomas comes back. But of course, Michael Thomas was not present for this game because during practice, Chauncey Gardner Johnson called him a slant boy, and he punched him in the face. Thomas punched. Gardner Johnson in the face got suspended, but I'm kind of glad he did because, you know, this is like, I think a lot of other teams would have definitely kind of like let this one slide, but, you know, Thomas, just get your act together, buddy. And I also didn't really want him playing this week because, you know, the ankle injury, I just want him to be back 100% healthy after the bye week, which is this week, so yeah. Anyway, Sanders, 12 receptions, 122 yards, did very well. Alvin Kamara followed up with 74 receiving yards. Uh, Jared Cook, you know, he was coming back off an injury, had two receptions for 52 yards and a touchdown, and that was pretty much it. In terms of receiving, Marquez Callaway, the rookie, did 
did himself a decent job. Four receptions for 34 yards and also did a pretty good job in the return game. I'm happy with that as well. Uh, then Latavius Murray, 23 yards, and that was pretty much it. No one else really did too much. Uh, in terms of defense, look, the front seven was amazing. Sacked Justin Herbert three times, um, you know, but it was inconsistent. You know, the front seven was great. Secondary was leaky as hell because, like, the defense, we would either force three and outs or get scorched. And that was, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, like, guys like Marshawn Lattimore, uh, Patrick Robinson, Marcus Williams, uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, um, and Malcolm Jenkins, you know, the secondary has potential, but we just need to do better. Like, straight up. Nothing else can be said. Just got to tighten up. So I'm going to give the Saints... I'm going to give their defense, um, I'm going to give the Saints offense a 7 out of 10 because, well, like, 7 out of 10 because, you know, got off to a slow start, did very well at the end, but ultimately the pick definitely hurts and the very slow start and the constant three and outs definitely is what's holding me back. But if we're still putting up 30 points with a, a quote-unquote short game, it's not too bad. Um, in terms of defense, I'm going to give them a 5 out of 10 for this game because, you know, like, we were just half and half. You know, half the time we were good, half the time we were bad either. Like I said, it was either we were forcing three and outs or we were getting scorched. Now under the Chargers. Justin Herbert. Man, I feel bad for him. I think right now he's the best rookie QB. Doing better than Joe Burrow, which is pretty good. Which is good because Burrow has also done very well. Except for what he did against the Ravens. But anyways, Herbert's been consistent. But he's been thrown Tom Brady... Teddy Bridgewater, Patrick Mahomes, and Drew Brees as his first four quarterbacks to match up against. I think like most other rookie QBs, most of them I would say would lose and probably like lose just like they wouldn't make it close. But Herbert has done well and I feel so bad for him. The Chargers, you guys are going to ruin the man. Save Justin Herbert. He threw for 264 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Just absolutely scorching what the Saints secondary was. So I'm impressed, you know. In this game, in terms of rushing, no Austin Eckler, but Justin Jackson and Joe Kelly combined for about 100 rushing yards. No touchdowns, but that was pretty much it. In terms of receiving, Mike Williams. Man, like, the thing I noticed in 2018, 2019, was that when Rivers needed to go deep, like, if it was like a last-second heave, or it's like he needs to get a deep pass out just to keep the Chargers alive, he would look to Mike Williams, and Mike Williams would make the most ridiculous catches. He had five receptions, 109 yards, and two touchdowns. So, of course, the one where he burned Patrick Robinson, dude's freaking fast. But Robinson just, like, took his eyes off him for a second, and Mike Williams got right behind him. And then on the pass where it set them up in field goal range, that was just another one of those ridiculous late-game catches. Uh, Jerry Guyton only had one reception for 49 yards, and that was just, like, a deep pass. And Mike Williams, I think capitalized later off a touchdown for that one keenan allen sadly for him he did get injured but he had two receptions for 29 yards and a touchdown hunter henry followed up with four receptions for 23 yards and a touchdown that was pretty much it so the receiving game did well well at least mike williams was basically carrying it on uh, terms of defense you know a lot like the saints you know either you were forcing three and outs or you were just allowing long 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 drives so yeah so, um, Chargers offense, I'm going to give you a 7 out of 10, and your defense, I'm going to give a 6 out of 10. And just like the Saints, you know, for your offense, I'm giving 7 because it could have been better, but of course, basically, if you minus all those scorches, your offense wasn't that special. Like, it was still pretty good, but nothing that great. And of course, the three and outs hold me back from giving you a higher grade, and the defense, you know... I could hold you back from giving giving you a higher grade. I mean, you did not get scorched as much, but you still were unable. To, and for a quote-unquote short team, for some of the deep passes that breeze through, come on, you got to defend those. But anyways, uh, Chargers get a 6.5 out of 10. Saints get a 6 out of 10. Of course, the Saints, we did end up prevailing. So did we deserve this win? Yes and no. I'm leaning a little bit more towards no. I'm going to say I'm about... 58% on the no side, 42% on the yes side that we deserved it. I say yes because, you know, we mounted a comeback. Sure, we were down early, but we made a great comeback. And, of course, in overtime, we didn't quite get the touchdown, but we did get finally get the defensive stop that we needed. And the no part is, like, getting constantly scorched, uh, the slow start. So a lot goes into that. So, yeah. 
Saints charges I give a 6.5 out of 10. Saints I give a 6 out of 10. But of course, Saints prevail. On to the gonna outro. wrap up my video for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to see all my other recaps and my prediction videos, links to that will all be in the description below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, Com comment down below what else you want to see because you're going to be seeing my NFL Week 6 predictions, but you're not going to be getting a Saints recap because we're on our bye week in Week 6. But I might throw in a video or two there of something just to keep you guys entertained. Um, and that's fun. So, of course, comment down below what else you thought of the Saints game. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Savage. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Houdet Nation is out.